This is the F-256K boot screen. A similar screen will appear on your Junior if you have a Junior. It's self-explanatory, really. It's just a banner and then some contact information and the folks uh, responsible for the code. Uh, you see a blinking cursor in the upper left there. And uh, if you're familiar with the way that a Commodore 64, Commodore VIC-20, other machines uh, have worked, uh, essentially you can, you can cruise around and you can print things in immediate mode if you like and get that right away. You can uh, perform calculations uh, such as uh, print, well, we have print uh, one divided by three. Okay, very good. Or you can enter a, a line number, print. Okay. And then you can list contents. Very good. Now, the screen editor has uh, cursor keys and as a modern machine, it uses the inverted T up, left, down, right. Uh, configuration. Uh, the K has uh, this built into the keyboard on the lower right hand side of the keyboard and of course if you've got a junior you'll use your own PS2 based keyboard and, um, and it, it'll have the same cursor keys. Uh, the point is that there are a number of keys on the K that are reminiscent of the Commodore keyboard but they behave slightly differently because um, things have changed and standards are uh, uh, have evolved. The clear home key uh, doesn't deal with the home of the screen. I mean, how many times have you pressed home and had the cursor arrive at the top left of the screen and been frustrated? Well, here, it takes you to the home of the line. And hitting shift, clear home, takes you to the end of the line. In fact, there's no clear function, at least not built into the basic interpreter as it exists today. But there is a shortcut, if you care, uh, to remember it. I believe it's control L. So control L will indeed clear the screen. There's other um, kind of, I won't say hidden, but there's other control sequences. I'll quickly draw those out and we can discuss them briefly. Here's a look at uh, some of these, what I call undocumented control characters uh, for editing. I say undocumented because they're not listed in the manual. You can go into the code if you want to jump into Paul's GitHub repo. You can have a look through and try and find what else is supported, but I just happened upon these by um, pressing various keys and, and, and making note of what they do. So just quickly, I'll go through them. Uh, Control D deletes a character under the cursor from the right. I'll demonstrate here. Uh, Control H is, uh, is D, okay? Control H is a normal backspace, which of course takes the rest of the line with you. Um, uh, Control A and Control E take you to the start of the line or the end of the line. So Control E pops me to the end. Control A brings me back to the front. Same as pressing Home and Shift Home. Uh, cursor up and down, which is Control P, Control N. Not necessarily useful because you have dedicated cursor keys for that. And then there's a uh, Clear Home, which I demonstrated just uh, 30 seconds ago. And then there's uh, the Tab Stop, which is Control I. Uh, different from the Tab Key, which I'll explain in a moment. But just as a demonstration, if I'm here, and this one part's kind of peculiar. I stumbled upon this. If I hit Control I from the uh, first position, I end up on the ninth position. If I press uh, Control I from here, I end up on the seventeenth position. And in fact, from the rest of the way across the line, these are all eight characters apart, which is uh, interesting. But the first one jumps nine. I guess is the point. So let me go home here, and I'll just again. If I was here and I press Tab, or rather Control I, it'd take me back to that spot. So the, the, the key point is that the, the distance here is nine characters. The distance elsewhere is eight characters. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll raise an issue with Paul, which is a GitHub issue that is, and uh, see if he uh, has, a, has a correction he can throw in there real quick. Otherwise, the tab key does nothing. It's, a, it's under user control, so you can use it in your application, do whatever it is you like. They're not going to uh, tie you to uh, having to advance, which isn't necessarily anything that um, is, is useful. But in an application, you may want the tab key to move you from menu item to menu item. Uh, so it's not bound to any core function built into the kernel. But at least in the screen editor, control I will move the or advance the cursor. Um, anything else to mention here? I don't think so. I think that's about it. There may be more subsequent versions of the kernel and the basic and super basic will do things when you hit control uh, one, two, three, four, five, in, in terms of changing the color of the cursor, which it does not do today, but the keys are marked for it, so I'm, I'm sure it's something that's coming soon. With movement and special keystrokes behind us, let's talk a bit about the character screen on the F256 machines. Um, the screen in front of you has a, a kind of a, a little chart 
that depicts the horizontal carriage, if you will, of the screen from left to right um, as 80 characters wide and 60 lines tall. Um, in the middle of the screen, you'll see a blinking cursor, not quite the middle, but uh, upper middle. You'll see a blinking cursor, which represents the 25th line of the screen. And below, you'll see a countdown to the next 25 lines, bringing you to 50 lines uh, from top to at this point. The point is that the screen is approximately four times, actually it's quite a bit larger, than four times the size of the machines that many of us grew up with. That being an Apple II, uh, Atari 400, 800, Commodore 64, and others. Uh, some machines had an obscure 32 characters per line or 23, 22 characters per line. Um, but the, what, we, what we're used to is a 40 character wide screen. Um, the font on the screen, you're looking at the, the, the built-in uh, default font, um, is eight by eight, just as the, the, the characters were in the kind of old days, um, but it's much more readable. And the fact that we're plugging into a standard monitor allows us to have kind of single pixel width lines and strokes in the character set and have it be perfectly legible and, and nice and clear. Um, so what that provides you with is a, a canvas or a, or a, a workspace to uh, lay out your data, um, uh, character-based graphics, information for things like adventure games, text adventures, um, trackers, anything that's gonna use the text mode um, to be uh, expansive. Put another way, the crosshairs on the screen represent what would be a normal 40 character by 25 line or, or 24 line display. This would be the Apple um, II display, which had 24 lines. This would be the Commodore and Atari, I think had, had 25 lines. So the point is you've got one, two, over here, three, four full-size screens, potentially, within this one screen with 10 lines to spare below. So that's somewhat dramatic and, and, and probably overlooked. Um, you know, compare this to, I guess, the uh, IBM PC uh, character set and an 80 character screen, which again was, was standard from, the, from release. And you quickly realize that uh, the font here is, is generous from a width perspective versus that very narrow font that was used and, and the somewhat limited um, character key codes that were built into the IBM PC character set, which uh, was interesting and, and useful because it, it did introduce line draw, a line draw character set that was used in, in applications like, uh, I'm gonna name a bunch of old ones, like a, a, a perfect writer, not word perfect, perfect writer. Um, uh, uh, Xtree was a, a pretty good file editor back in those days, a bunch of them. You know, well before Windows 1 was released. Um, many of the applications which, which gave user drop-down menus used a lot of those graphic characters. But here, of course, we have a wider character set. You've got a nearly square um, character size and quite a bit of real estate to fill. So that's the first point I wanted to make. I should also add that the F256 um, does not offer three, four, five, eight different um, size screen. But from a super basic perspective, this is what you get. I'll have in a later uh, video uh, a feature on double wide and double high characters and how that could be used in interesting ways. Um, I've always appreciated the Atari character set and the fact that it, that it offered that kind of out of the box. And the fact that you're dealing with a you know, six point something megahertz CPU means that scrolling the screen and moving data around the screen uh, can be done with relative ease. And we'll demonstrate later how mem copy could be used or how inline assembly language can be used to really accelerate the drawing of, of characters on the screen, although it's not necessary considering the speed of Super Basic. A second topic I'd like to cover has to do with the Super Basic uh, set of commands that are valid. And as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, Super Basic is a derivative of a couple of different basics, so kind of the greatest hits of basics with uh, some tweaks that are a lot more like the BBC Micro um, Acorn Basic. Um, and we talked a little bit about that um, in, 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 I think, the introductory video. We'll talk more about it later. But in front of you, you see a, a basically a rendition of every valid basic command uh, operator and print directive available in the Super Basic manual. And I've taken some care to type these in, hopefully accurately. I'd say it's 99% accurate. There may be one mistake here or there. But in front of you is a list of 110 commands. So these are the, these are the keywords 
that are valid, and I have them paired in some in some regard, such that if you look at PROC in the right column, PROC and NPROC are in the same uh, kind of space together, but those are two separate commands. Um, I'd like to compare this to, again, the, the early 80s machines and the fact that um, Commodore BASIC 2, or 2.0, which was arguably the most popular BASIC, not by choice, but by the mere fact that the Commodore 64 was such a high-selling machine, and came with BASIC 2.0, uh, had 70 or so, 71 commands, I believe. And a fair number of those commands were um, disk access and device management commands, not necessarily useful in, in this context. Um, but, you know, looking at this set, you can see families of commands. And this is listed in alphabetical order for the most part, but you can uh, scan it and understand that there are commands in here for manipulating images, um, various types of graphics, um, audio, um, joystick control, etc., cetera, uh, flow control, the assembler, um, uh, dimension arrays, memory allocation, memory copy using the, the DMA facility, and the list goes on. Um, in addition, there are poke and peek commands uh, that give you full access to all of memory. Um, and again, as I said prior, inline assembly language that could be used to, to do even more and squeeze more out of the system.